there's always plenty to talk about in the world of Formula One, including the variables in the title race, Alpine looking to reach new heights, and foul language in Formula One. I'm Ollie Wilson for GP fans, and this is the news in F1 this weekend. Red Bull team principal Christian Horner believes there are a number of crucial factors that will determine the outcome of this year's F1 title battle with Mercedes. Following Lewis Hamilton's victory in the season opening race in Bahrain, Red Bull and Max Verstappen countered with a win in Imola. That has left Verstappen trailing Hamilton by a point going into the upcoming Iberian doubleheader in Portugal and Spain after the seven-time F1 champion secured the fastest lap at the Emilia-Romagna Grand Prix. Asked by GP Fans Global to outline the deciding factors in this year's fight between Verstappen and Red Bull versus Mercedes and Hamilton, Horner replied, It's all going to be about marginal gains. It's about who can develop the car effectively within the budget cap, obviously. About reliability, operational incremental gains, about human performance, and about the drivers. That's what it should be about fundamentally, the two best drivers in the sport going head to head. I certainly hope we can sustain this level of performance. Mercedes, you can see the progress they've made since the difficult start in the Bahrain test. They're in good shape and they're not standing still, so we need to keep pushing, trying to find performance and make sure that we have perfect weekends. Mercedes stunned even themselves in Imola when Hamilton secured the 99th pole position of his F1 career. For the first time though, in the current turbo hybrid era, Mercedes does not have the dominant car. While Red Bull can finally lay claim to starting a season on the front foot instead of playing catch up as they have had to do in the past. In drawing a comparison to Mercedes, Horner added, the pace is obviously very close to Mercedes and there are strengths and weaknesses of the cars in different areas. If you look at the performance on the intertire at Imola, we were quicker at the beginning of the stint, they were quicker at the end. The wear pattern across the front looks different between the two cars, and I would say Lewis's pace, he rode his luck, but once they were on the same spec of tire, in clean air, they looked very, very competitive. Indeed, he got the fastest lap, I think he had the benefit of a DRS at the beginning of that lap, which is three or four tenths, but it is very, very tight. It's about getting the most out of the cars on a case-by-case -case basis. F1 team principals, including Gunther Steiner, have dismissed concerns the bad language prevalent on the Netflix documentary series Drive to Survive has exceeded acceptable limits. Figures reported in the Business F1 magazine revealed a total of 227 swear words were uttered by members of the paddock across the 10 episodes of the latest series of the popular show. Haas team principal Steiner in particular has become renowned across the three seasons of the series for turning the air blue. Asked if the language should be toned down, Steiner said, That's a difficult answer. I don't know how much I'm going to swear this year. I cannot look forward. I don't plan it normally. As I've always said, I'm not an actor, so I don't get a script to do that. I don't know. I cannot answer that. I have no plans to swear less or little. I don't know what the future brings. Ferrari team principal Mattia Binotto believes that despite the bad language, Netflix has performed wonders for raising F1's profile. Apart from swearing or not, I think Netflix is a very positive activity, said Binotto. I think it brought a lot of fans and a lot of interest to F1. I think thanks to Netflix, we raised somehow the number of people being interested in F1. I think overall we have come to the fourth season and every single year it could be better to the previous one and the interest is growing. So I think we can all be very positive and helping the situation by maybe not being actors but bringing interest to the series. Alpha Tauri team boss Franz Tost, whose rookie driver Yuki Tsunoda has lit up his team radio on occasion so far with colourful outbursts, echo Binotto's remarks. They, Netflix, brought Formula One especially to young people, and this is quite positive, said Tost. In the next years, there are some other followings coming up, and then we will see. Generally speaking, it's positive, everything, and I see it in a good way. 
Alpine Executive Director Marcin Budkowski has promised Fernando Alonso and Esteban Ocon a number of upgrades for upcoming races after testing new parts during the Emilia-Romagna Grand Prix weekend. Alpine, which was rebranded from Renault this season, scored its first points in Imola but has dropped down the order after seeing midfield rivals Ferrari and McLaren make impressive winter steps. Budkowski admitted the team is playing catch-up, but of the coming developments he said, We have a number of test items for evaluation, and subject to the analysis that is going on, it looks promising. Going into the pre-season test, we knew we experienced some headwind during the winter with some of the regulation changes, but also we had a few issues in the wind tunnel that slowed us in terms of development. We knew we didn't have the best possible winter, therefore we weren't expecting miracles. We were expecting to be on the back foot in terms of pace, and testing confirmed that. Interestingly, we ended up pretty much where we thought we would end up, but we got it wrong with some of the cars that were in front of us, and some of the cars that ended up behind us. Renault achieved three podiums last season during a tight fight for third in the championship, and, as Alpine, the team had hoped the return of Alonso to the fold would help in its quest for third again this season. However, after no score in the season opening Bahrain race and just ninth and 10th places in Imola, the team is currently 7th, with 3 points, compared to the 41 of 3rd place McLaren and the 34 of 4th place Ferrari. Budkowski said the sum of the upgrades were progressive developments that have been in the pipeline from the start of the year, while others are a direct reaction to the team's performances in Bahrain. Speaking in Imola, he explained, In terms of reaction, most of the upgrades were planned already. You don't redo a front wing or things in two weeks. They were just our planned upgrades. Some of the other things we are testing here are the results of the Bahrain test and the race. We are pushing hard to try to improve our performance and it's clear from the number of upgrades we are bringing here. But first of all, we are further behind than we would like to be, so it's going to take a bit more than a few upgrades and then I don't expect everybody else is waiting for us to bring upgrades. Everybody is going to improve their car so it's a relative race. It looks like the car is going to progress with the upgrades we're bringing, but we've got more work to do in the next few races to bring a bit more. So is the combination of Alonso and these upgrades going to be enough to get Alpine in the fight for third place in the Constructors' Championship? And what are the other variables that are most important to Mercedes and Red Bull in terms of the fight for the drivers and constructors titles let us know in the comments section below and hit that subscribe button as well to stay abreast of everything going on in formula one with gp fans